Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with Arduino. Today we're gonna to be using this three to six volt motor in order to create this fan. Um, we'll go through the wiring diagram as well as the code. Um, so let's dive right in. Okay, so the main uh, component of today's project is what is called the DC motor. Here's what it looks like. It has two wires, the red and the black. Um, this will normally be found in the Arduino Uno kit. And then we also have with it the propeller. And so essentially when you put these together, um, can then create our propeller DC motor spinner. So it has a lot of different things today. We're gonna to be looking at transistor, transistors, diodes, but here's the basic wiring diagram schematic. So here's our wiring diagram. You can take a look. Um, it has made of a few central components that I want to emphasize, things that we haven't really talked about in the past. Um, please make note of the resistor, um, its connection to pin five, and make sure you're aware of all these connections as um, placing them or connecting in the wrong places can cause le electronic damage. I first wanna start off with this DC motor. Um, this is the red wire that is connected and this is supposed to be the black wire if you're using the Arduino Uno kit, um, which corresponds to colors red and black. So just please make note of that. Um, the DC motor, um, DC standing for direct current, it converts the electric energy from the Arduino get from the computer and turns it into mechanical energy by turning this rotor. Um, the rotor is the part that turns, the thing that we connect to our fan blade, and then the stator, which is the stationary brush. Um, there are a few other components, um, but the main gist is that when the direct current it flows through the motor, it creates this sort of magnetic field, and then um, the magnets on the side cause the rotor to turn. Um, so it has a lot to deal with like the electro electromagnetic part of it. Um, the next thing I want to focus on is the transistor, which you can see me hovering over. It has three main parts, the base, the collector, and the emitter. That's the three corresponding pins. Um, and essentially, the importance of this is they kind of play a role in controlling um, the flow of electricity. They can be amplifiers. Um, they can make electronic signals weaker, stronger. They can act as switches, turning the current on and off. Um, so it makes them super, super important. You can find them in a lot of daily electronics. And um, the size and its, in, its efficiency um, allows them to control the flow of electricity in a circuit, which is so, so important. The next thing I want to talk about is this diode, which is this black resistor looking thing. And they're super important for ensuring that electricity flows um, only in one direction during circuits. Um, they're primarily used in AC or DC uh, circuits, um, which is generally responsible for powering a lot of the electronic devices. Um, it blocks the reverse current, so it only allows electricity to flow one way. And this is important um, to prevent like sensitive electronics from being damaged um, if like being damaged if they can't handle um, electrical uh, current flowing the opposite way. So the diode is also super, super important in um, controlling the flow of current. All right, so we have a few declaration statements. We have the different pins that we're going to refer to in the future of the code. Um, we, we're establishing DRA and DRB, which are connected to the DC motor as our output. And we're going to begin serial communication so that we can use our serial monitor. Um, we have a few different for loops. Um, and essentially, to this first for loop uh, makes it so that the um, motor goes fast and then it goes slower. Um, you can see the analog right enable I. You can change this to any value. Let's say if you didn't want to add a for loop, we can just focus on this code and have this speed 180, um, 300 if you like it faster. Um, but for this case, we're just going to use I just so that we can refer back to our loop over here, which starts at 255 and the speed decreases every single iteration of the loop. Um, once it stops, then we're going to go the other way 
and we're going to increase its speed. So it's going to decrease speed and increase speed. And you can definitely play around with this. It doesn't, you don't have to use for loops, but essentially that's how the DC motor code would correspond. And if you want to get creative, um, you can try experimenting with the different speeds and um, the digital right high or low. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I really hope you learned something. Today we work with the DC motor looking at transistors and diodes in order to make the DC motor spin and the propeller similarly. Um, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and we'll talk to you in the next video.